Ladies and gentlemen, this is the reason why I come to Toronto. Forget about the audio show. This is where the real action is. So you're thinking if you want to come to the Toronto show or not, don't hesitate. This is it. Hey everyone, I just got back from the Toronto Audio Fest and what a show. The energy was very good this year and for those who don't follow me, whenever I cover a show, I only look at the positive in each room. The best part of the audio show was meeting many of you. Fun fact, did you know the Toronto Audio Show is only half the size of the Montreal Audio Show? I always thought Toronto was bigger at everything. Well, that is because the Toronto Audio Show is only 5 years old, so while the Montreal one is probably older than some of you. They are planning to expand the Toronto show next year to get more bigger rooms, so I expect next year to be even better than this year. Today, I have two great stories to tell you and one of them has something to do with cables, while the other one is about isolation base. By the way, most prices I quote in this video will be in Canadian dollars. So get your calculators out. For now, let's start with my favorite room of the show. Well, actually the, sh the room that blew me away. Well, of course, after my room, the Emotiva room. Now I have reviewed the speakers before, so I know it is not a detail sounding, hi well, no, hyper detail sounding speaker. And the bass is on the linear, non-exaggerated side. What they show me surprised my audio buddy, Mr. Cantor and me. The combo man did everything great. Detail, spacious, control, and powerful bass. Now, usually budget systems have bloated and fat bass to impress you. Not in this case. Nice, defined bass. I mean, I know the T2 Plus speakers can punch since I had them for a while, but they can really punch at the show. They told me the TA2 amp, it was only $9.99 at the show. That's in Canadian dollars. Okay, I see them selling for $1,500 on their website. Well, maybe it was a show special. Regardless, $1,500, $9.99, it is still a bargain because it has a built-in DAC, Bluetooth, 130 watt, Class AB, and even an FM tuner. I was joking with the rep asking, does it come with a coffee maker? For the price, seriously, I cannot ask for anything more because it has everything I wanted in a proper audiophile system. If you have Emotiva speakers or even other speakers, you should get the TA2 Plus, TA2 Amp. Even the smaller TA1 was equally impressive, if not more. This room shocked me the most at the show. So talking about being shocked, let me tell you a story. Okay. The YouTuber Mr. Chips told me the room that shocked him the most at the show was the Altitudo audio room and it has something to do with cables. Now he has already uploaded his video but let me summarize it. So I borrowed Altitudo's room for an hour to showcase my new upcoming Class A solid state Galleon power amp. I was using Bluetooth to stream to the uh, Eversolo streamer, the DMP6. yeah. Uh, it was going to a Go Note preamp for the demo. I know I'm crazy because I have access to a $30,000 CD player in that room, but I used that $1,000 Eversolo DMP6. Now it's all a question of matching because the DMP6 is lively and detailed. The Galleon TSA20 is smooth and musical, so they match well together. Anyway, one of my subscribers in the room told me, hey man, with his system, there are certain songs he find too shouty. What can he do? So we played that one song to see what the problem was. And even with the buttery smooth TSA20, it was a bit shouty. So Leonid, the owner of Altitudo, whom I've introduced in the past as someone who's very good at system matching and fine tuning systems. He said, Thomas, I'm going to fix it with cables. Cables? So I told him, if you're going to do this live at a show, putting your credibility online, I am going to record it and I will not edit it. All right, guys, we're at the well, Toronto Audio the Show, and, and we just changed cables. And the goal here is to see if anybody can hear a difference. And nobody needs to lie because I won't throw anybody out. Please raise your hand if you heard a difference. So in the interest of being super honest, right, I asked the second time. We play a different song. And some people are like, hmm. 
maybe there is a difference. Fair enough? Fair is that an honest assessment, right? So that's the problem with uh, A-B testing cable, right? It's uh, you got to do A-B, A-B, and even then, even then. So you cable deniers, don't worry. We did not prove that cable makes a difference in today's video. All right, uh, just, uh, this is for me, right? Uh, the class A, 20 watt. Um, if you think that's good, please raise your hand. And then, oh, oh thank you, thank you very, very much. Thank you. Oh, my designer asked if I pay everyone 10 bucks uh, for this. In the comments, can you let me know why you go to audio shows? Or why don't you? Okay, in the interest of time, I will try to rush through each room at high speed. Okay, so let's move on to one of my favorite rooms. It was early in the morning and I was the only one there. They were very accommodating. I think maybe I was alone in the room, but I was able to slow down and just enjoy the music. This is what high-end audio can do. The level of realism achieved it levels up compared to many systems I've listened to. And I've listened to easily over 100 systems. Balanced presentation. Nothing is overdone. The bass is not punching in your face. But I still can feel the gentle rumbling on the floor. Super high resolution where I can hear the vocal cord of the singer easily. Very crisp. A li little bit on the linear side. And the speaker disappears. As I walk around the room, the sweet spot where the music sounded really good was wide. I don't know is it because of the mid-range. If you look at the design, it's like two long cones. Very interesting. Nothing is overwhelming in this room. Two words to describe the mid-range. Warm and organic. This is why you come to an audio show. I cannot achieve this kind of result at my home. Next, the NAD room where they introduced the M66 combined with the M23. Now I've made a video on the M33 on the Hi-Fi Plus channel. Here, I'll link it somewhere in the description. So I'm familiar with this M. I don't know if it's because they recognize me, but the second I walked in, they played the song Make Us Stronger by Ghost Rider. Uh, for those who don't follow me, wherever, whenever I go to an audio show, I go to each room and I play the song. Man, playing that song at 10.30 a.m. is like taking five espresso. I can feel my adrenaline pumping. This is why you come to an audio show, right? You can play at a volume that you have gotten your neighbor's neighbor to call the police on you. Very powerful. As I said in my M33 video, the NAD is more about having that very clean and neutral presentation. Good bass control, fast speed, extended decay. Keyword here is extended decay with this uh, setup. And there's plenty of power. I heard exactly that with the M66 and the M23 at the show. These DALI speakers are hyper detailed. Great if you like to extract every single bit of detail from the music track. Next, we have the Phonica L speakers. I heard them at the Montreal Audio Show and I was impressed with the imaging. See, usually panel speakers are a wall of sound, but not Phonica, there's more precision. I would say this time to get good imaging, I had to move my chair really to the back. Luckily, it was early in the morning, so I, I was able to move the chair anywhere I wanted in the room. And it was quite impressive once you got the right sweet spot. Now, these panels can deliver tremendous bass if your amp has enough juice. So new to the Toronto Auto Show is the Piro brand. Now, I know this brand, but it's my first time listening to their new product. I was told the amp was fresh off the oven and still breaking in, but man, it was able to bring out the bass from these panels. Wow, with 300 watt into 8 ohms, yeah, no surprise. I think it was priced around 13,000 Canadian. Now, I would love to A-B test this against the Higo H600 in that room. Now, sadly, I did not have the time to ask them to swap, but when I saw this 115 watt, $7,000 YBA i350 integrated amp in the corner, I had to listen to it, so they put it on for me. Now, YBA from France is a new to this audio show. I would say, besides the Perro 300iX integrated amp, this integrated amp is also something to look out for. Excellent, smooth mid range. Next, the coherent room was warm sounding. Despite having big, gigantic drivers, the bass was not out of control. The mid-range is not detailed, not the kind where you know you hear 
the pin dropping and stuff like that. It's not, and I mean it in a good way because it's comfortable to listen to. It's one of those systems where you just sit down with a glass of wine and enjoy the music. Looking at the size of the setup, you would imagine it would knock your teeth out, but no, it was quite musical. I love that it is not an analytical presentation, and the soundstage was quite big. The feeling it gave me was everything was anchored solidly, properly, very stable, and once again, that beautiful mid-range caught my attention. Well, maybe I can call this a gentle giant. Okay, next, the PS Audio Room. So I walked into the room, I saw that $18,000 FR20, and I walked out because I heard them at the Montreal Audio Show. However, as I start walking out of the room, I stopped because I said, hey, this sounds very different than the Montreal Audio Show. So I was curious and I walked back in. So that's why I say you never judge a system at an audio show. These speakers sounded so different compared to the Montreal Audio Show here in Toronto. The rep told me the room was the reason. You see, at the Montreal Audio Show, I found the speaker to be on the polite side. Well, this time, the top end sparkle, man. More to my taste. Some people might prefer the Montreal presentation, but I guess I'm a Focal fan, so I like hyper-detailed presentation, and these speakers have the resolution to deliver all the information you want. Lively, but not fatiguing. Next, Audio Note Plus Triangle. Now, these speakers, the 10 grand, Duetto, Triangle Duetto, I think that's the name. And I told the Brett who set up the room that he did a great job because I felt the size of the speaker was perfect for the room. And when I think of triangle speakers, I think of bright, sharp, detailed speakers, but 100% not in this case. I don't know if it is because of the audio note combo. This was not a bright presentation at all. If you had covered up the speakers, I would have not guessed they were from triangle. You can listen for hours. No exaggeration in either the treble or bass. Big soundstage, but correct sizing. Now, those speakers were powered by Audio Note Gear, and as you know, Audio Note Gear is no joke. Well, the price tag is also no joke. It was using two A3 tubes, and it was only 3.5 watts. 3.5 watts? Heck, man, my cell phone can output more watts than that. But it had no problem driving these speakers. See, another reason to come to an audio show. You get to hear what good 3.5 watt can do. If you never listen to 2A3 tubes, man, your audiophile journey is not over. Next, the Gershman Room with Oracle turntable and Eon Art amplifiers. Now, these amplifiers, they can go up to 100 grand. You'll never guess that this amp has tubes and class D amplification. Now, I was told it runs in class A until the final stage. But please don't quote me on it, as I have the memory of a goldfish. Oracle turntables, I have to be honest, I don't know much about turntables, so I cannot comment on them. But this is, sure looks like a work of art. That turntable, man, probably cost more than my car. They also have a CD player that looks like it is from the year 2050. Every time at an audio show, the Gershman Room is always a treat. So this is their Black Swamp speaker, but in white. The design is interesting. The bottom woofer is detached from the top woofer, so you can slide back and forth for time alignment. And the Gaia feeds are custom made for Gushman. The sound was on the comfortable side. The warmth of the turntable came through, and the bass was rich and could easily fill the room. Well, that room is probably the size of my house. Now, one of the better rooms at the show. I do want to add these amplifier is probably part of the reason why the room sounds amazing. Well, also the Oracle turntable. I say this because I have a pair of Gershman speakers at my home now for review. And what I heard at my place is just not the same as I heard at the Montreal show. Despite it was the same speaker. I know at an audio show, we tend to pay more, more attention to the speaker. But you know what? Every component is as important. Next, let's go to the XTZ room. They were showcasing their M8 home theater speaker and they gave me an hour to showcase my new affordable 1005 USD Galleon TSA75 amp as well as the semi-affordable 2005 TS34 tube integrated amp. So thank you for everyone who showed up. I felt like a movie star and some of you might be wondering why I showcased the TSA75 with a home theater speaker. 
You see the M8 is on the smooth side with incredible bass. The new Galeon M is, has incredible bass and is a very lively M. Well, there'll be two versions anyway. So it matched well with the smooth M8. I don't know if people were afraid I would throw them out if they said bad things about the combo, but the reception was very good. Some even came back a few times. So if you're looking for a home theater solution that can also be used for stereo listening, the M8 might be worth checking out. Okay, let me tell you a story about the isolation base in this room from Toughnut. You see, I filmed the owner Derek for two minutes, giving him a chance to promote his product, but I end up discarding the video because my story is more interesting. So I had my Galleon amp on his isolation base on the floor. At the end of the one hour presentation, Derek came to get the platform. I lifted up the amp while it was playing with another person. Derek pulled out the isolation base. I put down the Galleon amp on the floor and all of us look at each other. We were shocked. The sound changed for the worse. I have to say, after this, man, I am converted also. And I asked Derek to send me one for review. I'm going to bring it to all my friends' place and shock them. I thought cables were crazy, but now isolation base too? All right. Let's move on to the PSB room. PSB is a Canadian speaker company, and my first few speakers were PSB, so they have a special place in my heart. Now, I was wondering what the latest offering would sound like. Okay, V-curve, tilted up treble and bass. Fun to listen to, because the bass was pretty strong. I was enjoying myself for a few minutes, then I realized I was listening to their small active speaker. I mean, miniature active speaker. Alpha IQ 10 streaming speakers. I tell you man, active speakers defy logic when it comes to bass. I bet most of you would be impressed. I like the bass because it was very tight. If space is an issue and you want a simple streaming solution, maybe this is for you. Next, the $25,000 Fleetwood DeVille speakers. Now it is made of solid wood and comes with a wooden horn. Compression driver, not sure if it's because of it is made of wood, but this is such a pleasant system to listen to. Driving the system was Accuface, was an Accuface amp, Torrent turntable, because despite having a horn, it was not harsh or shouty, which you would expect from a horn. I would go as far as to say it was polite, but in a good way. I like the decay. It seems to be a bit extended and a bit cliche. I can almost hear the wood of the musical instrument. If you never listen to a speaker made of wood, you should. Only at an audio show. <laughs> Next, the Paradigm Room. They were using an Anthem STR integrated amp. The treble seems to be tilted up, very detailed. Mid-range was on the neutral and clear side. Now, what was interesting was the bass was very tight and there was no room treatment. Yet, the bass seems well controlled. So, I asked the rep if there was room correction. Yep, it was on. Ah, no wonder. So if you want to see the strength of room correction, well, this is the room to check out. Next, the BMW room, as usual with BMW, very crisp and detailed on the top end, strong type bass, but this time, I was a bit surprised by the mid-range. There was a bit of warmth. And what I noticed over the past few years, all these speakers which are known for detail and resolution seems to be moving in the direction where each year, the speakers are less bright than last year and more comfortable to listen to. Well, either that or the pairing of electronics got better. The room was excellent because they were able to retain the hyper detail top end while smoothing out the mid range. Well, maybe the amp, maybe the speaker, but for me, this was a step up from my past BMW experience. Next, I dropped by Vinyl Sound. Rich, the rep, was showcasing the $10,000 Wafdale Doverdale speakers. The source was a $20,000 BAT VK92 preamp. It was connected to a solid state BAT integrated amp, but only using the power amp section. Long story. The source was the Hi-Fi Rose streamer, and I met a subscriber there. He told me this was his favorite system of the show. He said, you only hear the music. There is no speaker. I have to say, yep, not one of those hyper detail presentations that can be distracting at times, but a relaxed presentation. I think the biggest strength 
as the voice is very intimate. The world just slows down with these speakers. Next, the Serving Vega room. I was looking forward to this room because I used to own uh, Serving Vegas. Now, the only serving speaker I could listen to was the slim one. I forgot to ask them the model, but I think it was the $700 LA365. I guess Serving Vega has joined the wife approval factor clubs because this looks different than the usual offering. Last year, the Serving Vega heard sparkle on the top end like no tomorrow. This year, with these speakers, it has a vintage feel, smooth, mellow, and warm, and it had plentiful bass. Now, having said that, the rep did remind me that I am listening to these speakers with an $800 AVR amp, so there's a lot more potential to these speakers. If you'd like me to review them, put them in, put it in the comments. Now, in the same room was KOH. Once again, they joined the Wife Approval Factor Club with a slim looking design instead of the vintage wider design like the Model 5. <sighs> Maybe they got a few complaints. I want to buy the Model 5, but my significant other finds it too bulky. This was the $3,000 Kendo 2F speaker. The voice is on the warm side, but maybe because it uses a titanium tweeter, it is quite detailed. With these speakers, the human voice caught my attention. Yes, one port in the front, two ports at the back. So yeah, the bass was pretty good. Next, I get asked frequently what phono stage to buy. I think what they were using in this room is worth looking into. Not a mainstream brand, Belmont, $1,150. It has XLR output. Now, I don't play with Phono Stage amps often, but I don't remember owning one with XLR output. They had it hooked up to the KLH, and I wonder if the warmth I'm hearing from the system has something to do with the Phono Stage. Now, they do have the less expensive model, and for those shopping for a Phono Stage, check them out. You can connect two turntables to it. Next, the Atoll Room. Now, they had these cool flat electrostatic speakers from Final Audio. The model shown was the Hybrid Model 7. Hybrid because it has woofers for the bass. Interestingly, the bass drivers were pointing upwards. The integration seems to be very good because I did not realize it had bass drivers until I checked the back. I am a big Atoll fan and I have the Atoll IN400 myself. Interestingly, maybe this is the new Atoll sound. There was no MSG in the presentation, as in no color. Maybe the new Atoll sound is going for that neutral presentation. As I said in the past, as you move towards higher end gear, they tend to sound more neutral. They had the $7,000 150-watt streamer integrated amp, a tow SDA300 on display. And yeah, the design would make my Atoll IN400 look like old school. I like the modern design with a beautiful color display. Next, Higo and Manapan 3.7i. Now this is the first time I've listened to the 3.7i and I felt the Higo drove it effortlessly. Wow, with 300 watt and the size of a big microwave, I mean, the Higo H600 sure looks like it has endless power. Now I was told usually the amp is cold to the touch, but because the 3.7i dipped below 2 ohms sometimes, at the end of the day, the H600 was actually warm. Now, in this room, there was also the Higo Viking CD player. And as I started listening, I was confused. You see, I have the Viking at my home and it is smooth. What I heard at the show did not have that characteristic. So I was puzzled as to why there were a bit of hard edges in the presentation. Turns out, the CD player was not playing because they forgot to bring the CDs. Ah, Murphy's Law, right? Everything that can go wrong at an audio show will go wrong. Well, they had to randomly buy some on the way to the show, so they only had four CDs. I asked them to put it on, and 30 seconds was all I needed. Ah, it was way, way smoother. Beautiful voice, and more pleasant to listen to. Now, for those who missed it, you should listen to the 3.7i with the Viking CD player. Completely different. All right, guys, I got the famous Philip here today, and I drag him out because I want to ask him a question. What does it like about the audio re research i150 and the speaker? I, I forgot the name. It's but the rhythm Marga, right? I'm not gonna ask you anymore. Just All right. very simple. What you yeah, like no about Yeah, no third there. degree here. Thank, thank goodness. Yeah, no unfiltered Philip version. Just no. Actually, I should say that. I'll cut that out. I'll never say anything bad about anything. Ha ha ha. ha, ha. All right, go ahead. So, what so, do you like about the the amplifier? Uh, well, if you want the audio research kind of like experience. It's a very easy thing to start. You could buy an i50. It's uh, 
it has all the audio research kind of like sound. It's, it's very beautiful in the mid-range. It's not too tubey. Um, it has a great deal of neutrality. It allows you to really hear what's going on in, in, in the, you know, the music that you, you like. Uh, it's all extremely musical, but it's their expression of what musicality is. And it's certainly as, as uh, easy to listen to as Macintosh. Um, Macintosh is also very good. As you know, I sold the product for almost six years. Yeah. I highly believe in it. But the audio research stuff is stuff that I personally own. I have an LS25 Mark II at home, mm -hmm. um, which is what I could afford. Mm -hmm. If I could afford more, I would buy something better from uh, audio research, like uh, LS28 or a Ref, Ref6 or something like that. Now, I think I'll stop here as the video is getting quite long. I see uh, other YouTubers have covered the big rooms in depth, so I would not repeat it here. Many big rooms were quite impressive, although I hear people say audio shows are not the best place to judge a system. I think if you walk into each room with a positive attitude, there is a lot to enjoy from each room. That was what I was hoping to convey in this video. Audio shows can be a fun place if you make it your goal to find the positive in each room. Now I find the Toronto audio show gets better and better each year. If you are a passionate audiophile or music lover, definitely worth the trip. Alright guys, till next time. Thank you. 888, this is it, 880 watts.